steps to make progress Being stuck, trapped in the stress Stepping back, we can see how to clear this mess That's why we choose to regress Beat up us in this game We can lead men and try Making decks from packs, but All the cards they use die Our collections regress and will help us see The path to grass that our dreams With the help of AI We will try from new designs Our dream regression Now online Heck yeah. One, two, wait, no, that's not how counting down works. Three, two, one, clap. Three, two, one, clap. I figured out how counting down works. I'm glad. Can you count down from 20 after paying 2,000 life points? I, I, sorry, so I, okay. So I want to be completely clear on this. The transaction that is occurring is I have just lost 2,000 life points. So I need to count down from 20 as I add 20 counters to one of my monsters to denote the amount of hundreds of life points I've lost. Yes? No, I, no, you just have to add counters to yourself as a player. Well, I mean, because you can't, in Dueling Book, you can't put counters on yourself. So what I would have to do is put it onto one of my monsters, and then, just in case, whenever I put down any other monster, I would put the same amount of counters onto that, just so that, like, if one of them gets removed, we, we don't lose track of how many counters there are, which are keeping track of how much life I've lost. I hate the counter system in Dueling Book. It's so bad. <laughs> Why doesn't it just let us write a number in? That's what I'm saying. Well, I'll tell well, you something. Yo, did you see they put me in multi blood? You're not talking about Komeda, right? I I am. Komeda Basil. Wait. Komeda Basil. Komeda Basil. Yeah. Did I just hear okay. a rooster? You Rad. probably did hear a rooster. So there's like a big cage behind me and to the left where there's some roosters and some chickens and a separate one with a whole lot of ducks in it. The ducks don't need to be in there, but it's like a safe place for them to be during the night so they don't get ambushed by jerks. Yeah, that makes sense. Jerks, the natural predator of ducks. Yeah, the chickens, though, will get attacked in the middle of the day, so they're not as good at flying away from trouble as ducks are. Uh, Legend of Zelda taught me that they can defend themselves just fine. That's not a chicken. That's a cuckoo. That's right. Papa. Papa. It would Pokey be po. so funny to snipe you right now with a popo. Listen, you could. It, it, okay, I'll tell you right now. Popo is part of the global thing that also just like embeds my microphones into all of my scenes. Oh. So it's actually a lot of trouble to have a scene that doesn't have Popo in it, but still functions. So... <laughs> If somebody were to put in courtesy Popo Roulette, it would show up in it. Hello. It would show up in a YouTube video. Rad. All right. I'll have to. I'll have to save that for a prime time. Wait. New strategy unlocked. Derailing your train of thought while you're trying to figure it out to a situation by summoning oh. Popo. By summoning Popo. Yeah. No, that's smart. I didn't consider that as a possibility call that metagaming. Mm. Okay, before you have any more broad ideas, I think we should go to the dream zone. Are you okay with that? I love the dream zone. Let's go. Okay, say the jingle. Uh. Okay, the... you're right. You're right. You got it. You got it. That was, <laughs> you got it. You got it in one again. Okay, here we are, the dream zone. No. All right. Do you think that we should once again start with the preview card? Let's start with the preview card. Here's the preview card. Oh yeah! Wayfinder Mole, a level 1 Earth Tuner with 100 attack and defense. During your main phase, you can discard this card from your hand to add a level 4 lower beast type monster from your deck to your hand. You can only activate this effect of Wayfinder Mole once per turn. Mojo was supposed to be in the set, right? Yeah, Mojo's in this set. Mojo's at rare. I absolutely didn't see that little critter at all. I, I got a couple. I didn't get King of the Beasts. Yeah, I mean, you can just have Mojo. He's cute. I can just have Mojo. But either way, I mean, it doesn't matter if we don't get beasts now. There's going to be beasts in the future, and Beast Rota is going to be pretty good. Beast Rota, that is also mysteriously a level <laughs> one tuner sometimes, is pretty good. 
I just think all consistency cards should also be a level one tuner. Rhoda, level one tuner. Mystical Space Typhoon, level then, one tuner. You know what? You say Mystical Space Typhoon. Mystical Space Typhoon is also Exiled Force, so... True! It's also half of a delinquent duo. I'm not familiar with whichever card you're now referring to. I was just thinking about Archfiend Eccentric. What is Archfiend Eccentric? Ah, oh, someone doesn't watch Junior Journey. Oh! Wait, this is a really cute card! What? Why is it a pendulum monster that's a mystical space typhoon and an exiled force? I told you, this is what I'm saying! I am immediately going to tcgplayer.com and looking up how much this card is because I want to place it. Anyway, enough talking about real cardboard. We're here to talk about dream cardboard. You know, you make an excellent point. Thank you. I try. We've had a tuner. Now let's have a synchro. That's... That... Frosty the Freezing Cold Water Level level 10? Deadass, that is just Cierno. Uh, false. Her name is Cierno. Oh, Cierno? Is it Cierno? Congratulations on her asserting her Italian-ness. Nosity? Anyway, it's a fairy synchro. A tuner plus a non-tuner water monster. Hey, water support, let's go. When this card is synchro summoned, until your next turn, face down cards cannot be flipped face up. And if a monster battles a face-down monster before damage calculation, send the face-down monster to the graveyard and negate the effects of its card name until the end of the turn. I like this. The negation effect is really nice. This is a worthy boss mo- wait. Yeah? This has no effect after the first turn. Correct. This is a good card! You see, I it's see? a cold wave. <laughs> ah! Why? That's so- you're absolutely I mean, it's, correct. You're absolutely I mean, it's correct. less broken than Cold Wave. God. But it, it freezes all their set stuff so they can't use it until the end of their next turn. I do love Cold Wave. You know, they, they can still play spells. They can set traps. Yeah, but I mean, who plays traps in 2022? Yeah, who does? <sighs> Imagine playing a lineup of like 15 normal traps. Okay, to be clear, we are both purple card likers, right? Yeah, I do like purple cards. I love traps and I love fusion monsters. I like trap cards, but I tend to like synchro monsters more. Fusion monsters can be cool though. I like Neos fusions and Gladiator Beast fusions. Contact fusions. You like contact fusions. Cries and Shadow. I just think it's neat to send some little critters back to the deck and then summon a big critter. Anyway. Anyway. Here's an equip spell card. Heuristic Drill. Equip only to a machine-type monster. The equipped monster gains 500 attack. When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, target one card your opponent controls. Destroy that card. I was about to say, Maha Vilo fans are celebrating right now, but then I read, reread the first line. So, one thing that I will note. This card does not have to be equipped to get the effect where it can destroy something when sent to the graveyard from the field. Yeah, I love setting Heuristic Drill and baiting my opponent to MST it and killing their monster for in exchange. That is something that can be done. I love turning Heavy Storm into a exiled force. <laughs> I love him. But that's the thing. That's the thing. You set a Heuristic Drill and then you MST it and then your MST is an exiled force. It's neat. I like this card. I think this is a great card, especially because Morphtronics exist. Yeah, also Power Tool Dragon was in this set. Hey, you like trap cards, right? I do love trap cards. This is... I like this art. Cluster Headache, a continuous trap card. I also... I don't get Cluster Headaches. When a monster battles, if an effect of that monster's name was activated this turn, its attack and defense are treated to zero. This is a cool card! I don't know how great it's going to be, but this is a cool card. I love the flavor of this card. I also am not exactly clear on its power level, but it's interesting. It's interesting. I'd I'd put it on the similar power level as, like, Fairy Box. I'm a fan. Also, with the way that it's worded, you can flip it up as a combat trick. That then is a semi-floodgate. Yeah. Also, the art. Easily my favorite art so far. I'm sorry, Juno. I'm sorry, Mole. <laughs> well, we're wrapping back around. It's monster time. Monster. Oh. 
wait. This is super cute. All right, Emissary Wispy. This is good art. Light level three spellcaster tuner. You can send a monster from your hand to the graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand, or if the sent card was a spellcaster, from your graveyard. Whoa, that's sick. During your main phase, you can discard one card to special summon one level four lower spellcaster from your hand. One this spell is... card. You discard a spell card to special summon the spellcaster. Oh, there's no one What's for claws anywhere on this. <laughs> That's hilarious. You are right. If you want, <laughs> you can discard every card out of your hand to special summon two monsters or whatever. That's so funny. Yeah, cute card. Good card. I love this. I'm a fan. I don't even really have spellcasters, and I'm considering if I want to pull that card. I mean, it's cute. It's cute. Really, does anything else really matter? I don't know. Maybe some things matter. Hey, do you like floodgates? Yeah, floodgates are pretty cool, to an extent. Here's a card. Scales of Mod. During each player's upkeep, if both players have a monster, the turn player tributes a monster. If this card is in the graveyard, you can tribute a monster. Place this card face up in your spell and trap zone, but banish it when it leaves the field. What's upkeep? What, what? Standby face. Oh. Oh, okay. <sighs> you know, it's got that very fun flavor. It's like ectoplasma. Now I gotta look up Ectoplasmer. <laughs> Ectoplasmer says, during each player's end phase, the turn player must tribute a monster, and then their opponent takes damage equal to half of that monster's attack. You well, the difference I would say is this one hits your opponent before it hits you. Oh, it is much better than Ectoplasmer. Also, because it recurs itself. And you can theoretically get rid of it before it comes back to you. So. Yeah. That's actually pretty cool. This might be my second favorite card of the set so far, but I mean, we still have one more to reveal, right? We do have one more to reveal. Hey, remember Fresh Start? Y yes. Lesbians losing I think the my card wasn't broken enough. I think it wasn't busted enough. <laughs> All right. How are you going to lead with that? Well, this card is not as outwardly busted as Fresh Start. But I think it is also kind of more playable, but also kind of less playable. It's weird. I'll say it. This card is good. Good card, good card. But it has some conditions about it that make it slightly interesting with how you gotta play with it. All right, let's see it. Frenzied Study. A normal spell card. If your opponent controls a monster summoned from the extra deck, draw two cards. You cannot summon a monster from the extra deck during the turn you activated this card. I like this a lot, actually. That's really good. It's not like we're in the era where decks are made to summon from the extra deck or anything, right? This card's gonna be live yeah, all the time. Yeah, it's... Downside is definitely something that would be more relevant later on, but it is still something that you feel now. Yeah, like, you gotta make that play and turn the tables, but you can't because you can't summon Hatsune Miku in ancient Egypt. Yeah, people will do a lot worse to draw two cards. Truly, that rivals Fresh Start. Fresh Start. A, a card which rotted in your hand during episode one and which you took out of your deck entirely for episodes two and three. I'm pretty sure I had it in my deck for episode three. I have a deck list up still. I just, I literally have had it in my deck and I've just never drawn it except for one game where it sat in my hand because I was winning. Yeah, that's fair. FS spell cards be like, we're good, but very conditional. I didn't even think about the fact that it's FS. <laughs> oh, that makes it so much better. Archetype. Wait, not only is it FS, it's F-R-E-S-T. Oh my god, you're right. So the next card is going to be like French star or something. French stench. <laughs> yeah, man, the next, the next thing draws most French stench. French stench, yeah, there we go. Uh, like... Uh, Discard your hand, draw three cards or something? I don't know. That's actually, hey. that's broken. Huh. Yes? So this is the lineup. It's a good lineup. I like, I, th I like all of these cards, actually. Do you know what cards you want? Because I already have an idea what I want. Well, I did win last game. Does that mean I pick first or you pick first? I don't remember because we both have passed it each time. Uh. So I, I think the actual rule has it differed from what it used to be. 
the winner's right is to choose whether to go first or to get the two extra cards. Ah, oh, I see, I see, I see. I understand, I understand. Okay. So what's your choice? I think I would like to pick up Frenzy to study. All right. Ada gets draw two cards. I actually have a hard decision here. Yeah, they're kind of all good. There's two in particular I really want. Yeah, I'm going to pick up Emissary Wispy first. Card's cute. And there's good spellcasters coming up. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be real with you. I think your spellcaster pool is a lot better than mine. I still do have access to a Tricky, I'm pretty sure. I think I'm going to pick up Heuristic Drill. Yo, Morphtronic player spotted. I mean, you did force me to get the Morphtronic card in part two, and... I think that it has stuff that it can do. It's Exiled Force for MST. It turns your <laughs> Exiled Force into MST, you're right. <laughs> I'm picking Scales of Ma'at. So, last we got Wayfinder Mole, Frosty the Freezing Cold, and Cluster Headache. Yep. I don't know how easily I'm going to have access to it. However... Every one of these feels like it's going to be an investment for the future type thing. I would like to get myself a level 10 synchro. I'm taking Frosty the Freezing Cheer now. Frosty the Freezing Cheer now. All right, so that gives me Cluster Headache, which was the last one I was interested in, and uh, Monty Mole. I'm happy with this pulls. Do you feel like you got everything you wanted? I did get everything I wanted. Side note. Spoiler alert, I only got one Iron Core of Kwakumeru out of this pack, so I actually did not get everything I wanted. Uh. Interesting. I will come up with ideas for a deck. Now I, I can no longer just be a psychic type deck player. <clears throat> so now it's time to get creative. I mean, it was bound to happen sometime, right? Yeah. We have regressed. Mm-hmm. That said... Right, so... Here is the deal. What was I talking about? Um, nothing in particular. <laughs> we finished our draft and then you said, all right, here's the deal. Yeah. Sorry, I completely lost track of what I was actually going to say. But I know how I can fix that. Oh? I can find out what I was going to say by going back in time oh to the pulling cards zone. Ooh, wait. I don't know if we make noise for the pulling cards zone. No, we don't. Fuck! A raging battle is upon us with a set that raises the bar. Raging battle is probably most notable for the Black Wings. At common, we have Shura the Blue Flame. An 1800 that summons a low-level Black Wing from your deck when it kills a monster by battle. Also in here is Kalut. A hand trap combat trick that gives 1400 attack to any Blackwing. And of course, the card that made Blackwing famous, Black Whirlwind. When you normal summon a Blackwing, add a Blackwing with less attack than it to your hand. This ensures that from the moment you summon Soroka or Shura, the advantage train never ends. Because all of these pieces are at common, it is extremely likely that we will be playing Blackwing today. I know, I know, Ada playing a good deck is kinda weird, but it is what it is. Black Wings are by no means the only good thing in this set, however. The Ultras include Power Tool Dragon, a card which can search out equip spells, which we happen to have quite a powerful suite of, and which can trade its own destruction for theirs. Forbidden Chalice, which can either be a combat trick or blank effects. King of the Beasts is just a big guy that can be relatively easily found. While Light End Dragon is a level 8 synchro that will basically never lose combat. There's more in here too, like Immortal Ruler, but it's all stuff that, for one reason or another, isn't likely to make a splash in a limited environment. At Super, though, Black Winged Arm Dragon is reasonably good for a pretty accessible level 6 synchro. Delta Crow Anti Reverse is a Black Wing card that blows up the opponent's entire face down back row, and if you have three Black Wings, can be activated from your hand. Sea Dragon Lord Gishundadon is our first reasonable level 5. Phoenixian Cluster Amaryllis saw play at an FDK. Magic Planter can trade a spent Continuous Trap for two cards. And Swallow's Nest lets you trade a Doomed Winged Beast for another one from your deck. The rares are where things really go wild, though. 
If you remember Maneater Bug, Snow Maneater is a Maneater Bug with 1900 defense. This may not sound like much, but in a limited environment in the Synchro era, a level 3 body sticking around after it flips up to munch somebody is very useful. One for one. Against the Wind recurs Black Wings. Blizzard the Far North is a Black Wing tuner that similarly lets you make quick synchros by summoning stuff out of your graveyard. Deep Sea Diva is unlikely to see play right now, but will definitely come into play in the future as it summons Sea Serpents right from your deck. Moja is more beast support, and notably can recur itself for when you're really in trouble. As well, we finally get another really good Morphtronic monster. Remoten lets you get stuff from your graveyard to your hand, or from your deck to your hand. This week I'm most likely to make Black Wings, given that I already have two Gale, but if I don't get enough to make it work, Morphtronic is the backup strategy. And once Black Wings have regressed to the point where I can't really use them anymore, a couple Remotans will make them look very appealing next week. Basically, in a limited environment, everything in this set is worth looking at. The Kawaki Merus start popping off in this set, especially with Guardian, which can be attributed to negate a monster effect and destroy what used it. There's even Rando Plants and Psychic support, though given the current state of things, it's pretty unlikely we'll be going to those strategies again so soon. Basically, there's no way to pull badly from this set. So, let's just go into it. Rika, what did you get? Hello, hello, hello. Another week, another Yu-Gi-Oh! Dream Regression Draft. I didn't look up what's in here. All I know is Power Tool Dragon is in here. I think the pack after is where things get interesting, for me at least. A lot of archetypes I like come out in the next pack, but for this pack, I'm not really sure what to expect. Raging Battle. We're gonna start this draft. Alright, so... This is where Power Tool Dragon comes from? I really don't know what else is in here. It looks like there's Kawaki Meru support. A little more Blackwing stuff. Shura the Blue Flame. Extremely good Blackwing card. Would be better if I had a game. This is us. What is this? Huh? Oh, we got one for one? For Velifar? Iron Core, we got one! Last four. Have. Last card. Last card. Here we are with 24 packs of Raging Battle. God, I'm just so excited to be opening this. Like, Crimson Crisis was basically nothing, but this set. Kalut and pack one. If we can get a solid Blackwing package, I'm gonna be quite happy. But even if you can't, there's plenty of other stuff we can go for. And I do want to run Mortronics at some point. I do have that Mortronic custom. And a Blizzard the Far North in pack two. Also Trap's done. You know, the Beast deck kind of slick. Honestly, I'm just excited. <gasps> Another Blizzard the Far North. Okay, we are eight packs in and I have a playset of Black Whirlwind. I would like to have any amount of Shura though. Okay, Deep Sea Diva. Probably not now, maybe later. I assume Rika might do something with this. Reinforced Human Psychic Borg. Okay, we're not going to be using that. I am very happy to see the Snowman Eater, though. And that's a playset of Kalu. Still no Shura. Swallow's Nest a little bit slick. Somehow that's our first Shura. Here's Blackwind Elfin the Raven, which doesn't seem very good. Good. But that's fine. We've got everything we need. That's our first Remotant. A playset of Blizzard the Far North. I don't think I would even run three, but... Okay, I'm getting a little bit worried. Where are the Shuras? We don't need GB Hunter. Where's the Shuras? We don't need Rose Tentacles. This isn't even good in plants. Okay, you know, I'll forgive only getting one Shura because... That is Power Tool Dragon, and I do have good equips. Well, there's Earthbound Immortal Kapakapu. Uh, this isn't the good one, though. If it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent, will destroy monster's original type. Yeah! This is, like, not even close to as good as Oslopisku. Last pack. Can we get a second Shura? We cannot. But we somehow got a playset of Snowman Eater... And all things considered, I can't call this opening bad. Well, hey Rika, what was your build? Hello, this is Rika Reedman. This week's deck is a mess. There's a semblance of a strategy though. This time around, I'm going all in on the mystery cataclysm idea. But we've loaded up the deck with lots of normal traps here. 
There aren't really any particularly great ones, but there's some decent ones like Consumption, Trap Hole, Soul Crater. Those are some good disruption. We have Half or Nothing to Discourage Battle. Defense draw, just the free draw. Miracle Locust is a battle trap, but you never know when it could be handy. And Trap of Darkness to reuse Mystery Cataclysm. Vault lineup is a little weaker. We just got generic removal. There's a lot of earth monsters, so this Gaia power is in here as a tech card. Fresh start as always. Book of Eclipse, because this is limited to one now. Then we have Scales of Ma'at, which I'm hoping to go for a more kind of control build with this. And so forcing the opponent to sacrifice a monster every turn could be very useful here. For the monster lineup, it's really just filler. I just used a bunch of earth and rock monsters to use Gigastone Omega and Kuakumaru Guardian since they have high attack and defense, respectively. Kuakumaru Guardian turns off monster effects. Gigastone Omega can destroy spells and traps if you use a card effect to nuke it. Iron Chains make up a lot of the lineup. I have them, they're Earth Monsters for Gigastone Omega and Repairman into Coil can make a Black Rose or a Black Rose. <laughs> I also have Big Piece Golem and Medium Piece and Small Piece Golem so that I have Rock Monsters for Koaki Mirror Guardian. The extra deck, we're not going to be synchroing much at all, so that's not really important. Side deck, overworked in case there's attack modulation going on and also it's a normal trap goes in match because almost everything in this deck is earth this is really good solemn judgment just in case any of swaps something out and karibo because karibo's cute it's not much but let's see what we can do hey hey i'm sideways now uh it's black wings baby i didn't really get enough shura so i got an assault beast in here to fill stuff out because it's a 1900 and Maneater Bug is in here because with Blizzard, it can make Carrion Crow and then climb into Power Tool or Brazen Emissary or Stardust. But other than that, it's exactly what you would expect. The slightly high amount of equip spells is because of Power Tool Dragon, especially the Heuristic Drill. The Heuristic Drill can only be equipped to Power Tool, but can also discourage Rika from blindly sniping stuff. Proof of Powerlessness is in here as a fun of. It is a bad and inconsistent card, but the idea of flipping it up once we have an established board to prevent Rika from getting back into the game is pretty appealing. Other than that, the deck is exactly what you would expect it to be. We want to get out Black Wings fast, we want to keep getting out Black Wings fast, we want to make sure we can get what we want when we want it, and we want to make sure that whatever we stick has higher numbers than what Rika tries to stick. I don't expect to side in this Elfin or the third Blizzard, but they're in here as additional playables in case Book of Eclipse or Gores get super banned out from under us. This is definitely the most straightforward of the decks that I've brought to this series, but bringing it now means getting Black Wings out of the way and preserving our ability to use Morphtronics and plants again in the future. Plus, while I know general Yu-Gi-Oh! watchers are probably pretty sick of seeing Black Wings in progression series, a lot of my specific audience isn't as familiar with them, and I think it's worth showing them what these funny birds can do. With that out of the way, I'll see you in the games. Okay, so here's a deal. A deal? Uh, you see this thing right here? I dropped it down just a little bit so that there's actually going to be room for people to read the card text, because, like, the very long card text is going to replace this. So this looks a little bit odd, I know, but, well, it's not like that space was being used anyway. Well, I can't even see what you're referencing anyway, so that's okay. Yeah, so one interesting thing is I'm, I'm in 3D. Uh-huh, you're in 3D. And this has allowed me to become sideways. People know what this is talking about because they watched the deck profile where I talked about this. Actually, I didn't talk about this at all. I just said that I'm sideways now. I just rotated and said I'm sideways now. I've decided this. That's not sideways, that's rotated. I am to the side. Listen. Sideways is like you're oriented to the side, not just facing the side. No, that's when you become horizontal. That's different. Oh my god. I'm picking this. You're sideways. If you were sideways, you wouldn't have picked rock, imposter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always pick rock. Will you? Right. You don't know any. You don't know the first thing about what I'll pick. You don't know the first thing about my. You probably do know the first thing about my deck. You don't know the second thing about my deck. <laughs> I really don't know the anything about your deck. 
All right, normal summon. Why is Dunkle Rita here already? Bay gamer. Fuck. Cause what? What do you mean? Why? Why? Why wouldn't Dunkle Hirate be out here already? That's anyway, go. That that card already beats my strategy. That what? My strategy of having a stronger monster than Dunkle Hirate Fay Gamer. Well, here's the thing. I am going to chain Mystical Space <laughs> Typhoon, targeting your Mystical Space Typhoon, oh, to no. negate its effect. Yeah, we are in 2009. That negates. That checks out. Yep, if you chain MST, targeting your MST to their MST, it negates it. Yeah, that's actually a ruling. Uh, I'm just going to summon a monster with zero defense in attack mode and end my turn. Why are you playing medium piece golem? I have medium piece golem. It's medium piece golem, Ada. What Did you know it's medium piece golem? What the fuck is happening? It's medium piece golem. Listen, you're, I'm desperate. There's no psychic monsters left in the game. They were all deleted. They were all regressed out of history. That is true. That did happen. I'm a little bit scarcey, so I'm going to go directly to battle and just hit into medium piece golem with Uncle Hirtat. I'm gonna activate half or nothing. Now you choose if either Uncle Hirtat loses half their HP or the battle phase ends. Guess the battle phase ends. Why did I say HP? I meant to say attack points. Listen, Dunkle Hirta can lose half of their HP. I don't mind that. <laughs> Do it. Why don't you go for it? Uh, okay, I'm going for it. <gasps> I'm glad that you're going for it. I'm just really curious about what could possibly be going on here. It's gonna be so funny. I got nothing. Okay. Your turn. I got nothing to your turn. Well... It's gonna be so funny when you see this card. Battle phase. The battle zone, okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna attack medium piece golem. Are you sure? Yeah. I'll allow it. Set a monster and end my turn. Understandable. I completely understand. My turn. Standby phase. Main phase one. End phase. I end my turn. It is your turn, oh, Ada okay. Basilisk. Listen, I got no plays. Well, I got plays. I got plays for days. Heck. You don't even know about my plays. I don't know about plays. You don't know even about know plays. about the day's plays. The day's plays? I'm gonna flip someone man-eater bug. Oh my... <laughs> Alright. Now yes. get your snowman out heater out of here. Alright. That's... That's not a snowman eater, Ada. Learn to read. That's Iron Chain Blaster. I see my strategy that has left you speechless. That to be true. I see you're speechless. My strategy cannot be beat. You know, I have to say, I didn't see this coming. Sometimes you do something and I don't see it coming. <laughs> and you know. that's valuable. Other times you do something and I don't see it coming and I can't see the value in that play whatsoever. I'm going to send Maneater Bug to the graveyard to tribute summon Blackwing Sirocco the Dawn. Hello, Blackwing Sirocco the Dawn. Attack directly with Uncle Hirta. I will lose 1900 life points. Directly with Blackwing Sirocco the Dawn. I will lose 2000 life points. But now, my plays are set, Ada. I. Okay, go for it. I draw. Listen, I'm not, I, I'm not afraid of your plays. Alright, I'm banishing this guy. And this guy. And special summoning Gigastone Omega in defense mode. Would you like to respond to the summon with anything, Ada Basilisk? No, I would not. I, I'm setting two cards. I end my turn. How are you going to get over my 2300 defense Gigastone Omega? <sighs> hey, I have got awful news for you. Oh no. I have the worst news you can imagine. What's the worst news I can imagine? I'm gonna go to main phase one. Uh-huh. Heavy storm. Why do you have a why do you have a storm? Because you have four set cards. Why do you have a storm? Fuck. Okay. I don't have anything for it. That was like all my all my stuff. Well, <laughs> that's not the card. I literally was banking on scary back row happening. Do you- do you want it to get worse? 
You just drew Heavy Storm, didn't you? No, I had it in my hand the, basically the whole time. Fuck. How's it worse? Are you gonna normal summon Elfin the Raven? Elfelt the Raven? Elfelt the Raven couldn't get over Gigastone Omega. Doesn't it like have an effect where it changes the battle position of something anyway? Oh, you're right, it does. I forgot that. I'm gonna normal summon Blackwing Blizzard the Far North. Oh, okay. This works out. I am going to send it to the graveyard and I'm gonna banish Maneater Bug. <laughs> to summon Carrion Crow, which I will then send to the graveyard alongside Dunkle here to a fey gamer to summon Stardust Dragon. This hurts me. I understand. Okay. I understand. Ow. Pain Pecco. All right. I have literally nothing. Let's go. I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to top deck the best card in existence, Ada. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go to game two. Spoiler uh, alert. It was medium uh, piece Golub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actual side ducking. I'm going first this time. Heck you. Okay. <laughs> I'm risking it all. You're risking it all? For the biscuit? For the biscuit. I end my turn. How did I open like this? How did I open this hand? What the f- Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm setting a card, and I'm setting a card, and I'm setting a card, and I'm setting a card. Why so many? And I'm ending my turn. My turn. Oh, actually, this works. I'm setting a card, and I'm normal summoning Kawakumaru Guardian. Would you like to respond to the summon with anything? No. This is fine. I'm entering my battle phase. I'm okay. attacking that critter. Okay. Would it be? It's Snowman Eater. <laughs> All right. So that's a mandatory effect. It is, in fact, a mandatory effect. I am targeting your Kawakimaru Guardian. I am responding with Kawakimaru Guardian? Yeah, because it's a negate, it is legal to do in the damage step. I. We're both going down one way or another, Buster. That might be true. Cool. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to... You're going to... I don't to... want to do this. But? I activate Black Whirlwind. Okay. I normal summon Blackwing Kalut the Moon Shadow. If that thing doesn't stay on the field for Black Whirlwind to resolve, do you still get the search? Uh... Collude? For Black Whirlwind. Yeah, Whirlwind. I still get the search. I don't get the search if Black Whirlwind doesn't stay on the field for it to resolve. But mm. I still get the search if Collude goes away. Well, I don't have a response anyway, so go ahead. Great. Great. Fantastical. Mm. Magnanimous. Heckin' spectacular. Yeah, and all those other words. I'm going to get... I'm getting Blizzard the Far North. Blizzard? Okay. What could the plan? I'm going to special summon Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind. Alright. And I'm gonna go to battle. Hold on, hold on. In response to the summit, I'm activating Mystery Cataclysm. Okay. So, for Mystery Cataclysm's effect, I can add two normal traps to my hand from this. So I'm gonna add half or nothing, and I'm gonna add Defense Draw. And the rest go in the bottom of my deck. This makes a lot of sense, yeah. Now, I can activate up to two trap cards from my hand this turn. That's it. That's that's the end of the effect. I'm going to battle phase. Yes. Gale in. I'll take 1300 damage. Collude in. Defense draw. So this damage becomes zero Set. and I draw a card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Draw. I now think I understand. Normal trap dot deck is actually kind of cool. It's cool! Uh, that's it. I'm ending my turn. End your turn? Um... The end of your turn, I'm gonna activate Soul Crater. So, I'm gonna banish Defense Draw, and I'm gonna destroy that card. I, uh, banish a trap, destroy Oof. face down Soul Crater. Hey, it's Prideful Roar! That card is literally never gonna get activated. Listen, I was hopeful! <laughs> okay, my turn, my turn, my turn. I'm gonna normal summon Kokumara Guardian. I'm going to enter my battle phase. Okay. 
And I'm going to attack Gale the Whirlwind. Okay. Main phase two. I'm going to set exactly two cards. Okay. Plus one. Yeah. And I'm going to end my turn because I cannot pay the maintenance cost for Koakumera Guardian. It is destroyed. Oh, okay. That's... Unfortunate. Hmm. You know how it is. I do, in fact, know exactly how it is. I will normal summon Blackwing Blizzard the Far North. Uh Uh-huh. Is that okay? Uh, I'm declaring yes. its effect. That is okay. Blackwing, Gale the Whirlwind is special summoned in defense. Mm-hmm. Special summoned Assault Dragonfly. Oh, crap. Okay. Blizzard the Far North attacks. I'm going to activate half or nothing. Okay, yeah, I'll have the attacks of all of them. Okay, so I take 650 on the first one. Yeah, Assault Dragonfly attacks. 1,200 for that one. Okay, main phase two. Mm-hmm. Stardust Dragon. I'll respond to the summon with consumption. So let's switch to defense with the effect negated. This is a card that just has an effect to destroy this. Technically, So yeah. I will send Stardust Dragon to the graveyard to negate it. All right. During the end phase, Stardust Dragon is special summoned. All right. I end my turn. All righty. I will just set two cards, and I end my turn there. All right. You know... <laughs> huh. I'm just thinking about how all the stuff I haven't done with Black Wings this game. <laughs> <laughs> I normal summon Dunkle here to a fey gamer. Understood. And I go to battle phase. Uh-huh. Dunkle here to attacks. I'm going to lose 1900. After that attack resolves, I'm going to activate... Nah, I won't. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Stardust attacks. I need to do math real quick. I hate doing math. Hold on. Is it better to do that? Or is it better to do that? I have five more traps on my deck. I'm going to activate. Oh, it's better here. So I think Trap of Darkness is coming. Yeah, I'm going to activate it just to get it out of the way. Now, I could do half or nothing and guarantee less damage, but also I could do Mystery Cataclysm and gamble on a better card, Cubby. Yeah, you could. I'm going to do that. Oh, there's literally no traps, no normal traps in here. Unfortunate. Yeah, uh, I just die because I gambled instead of doing the smart decision. Well, this is at least a look at your deck. I do see what was going on. Yeah, the monsters were just there as filler. I just want you to know, I didn't realize Dunko Herte was a wind monster until literally this turn. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was gonna do that earlier when you summoned a salt dragonfly, but I figured you would summon in a stardust and I could use consumption to get rid of it because I didn't think stardust can negate lingering destruction effects that don't destroy us at their activation, but... It's like... Because you can... The, the problem here is... I have no monsters. <laughs> anyway, Mystery Cataclysm is an extremely cool card. And I'm looking forward to getting more normal traps. So I have a question for you. Hmm. Would you like to play a game three just for extra content? We could, yeah. It doesn't count for anything. This isn't real. It doesn't affect bans. You don't need to worry about potentially holding stuff back to make sure it doesn't get banned. Sure. I'm hitting rock. You can hit paper. I preemptively hit paper because I know you hit rock. All right. I'm going to go first. Oh, this is a lot better. I'm just going to open Kokumera Guardian. Mm-hmm. I'm going to end my turn, and I'm going to show you Medium Peace Golem. Got it. I finally drew more than one monster in my opening hand, even though yeah. my deck is 21 monsters. That's sick. I'm going to activate Heavy Storm. <laughs> That's okay. <gasps> okay. Set a card and a card. And I'm going to end my turn. Mysteries. You'll never believe what mysteries lie ahead. Is it a man eater bug? I'm betting it's a man eater bug. I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> you answer it with a yes? Alright, my turn. Oh yeah, I put that card in here. Alright, well Heavy Storm's <laughs> out of the game, so I can finally set more than one spoiler trap. I'm yeah, gonna, that's fair. I'm gonna summon Iron Chain Blaster. I see. I'm entering my battle phase and I'm attacking with Coacumera Guardian into Snow Man Eater or Man Eater Bug. Uh, That appears to be true. You know what happens. Yeah. (laughs) 
1100. Yeah, I'll take the 1100. That's the end of my turn. All right, I'll start. Well, I'm going to... I'm going to normal summon Blackwing Bora the Spear. Bora. Okay. And I'm going to battle. I'm attacking. Is this worth it? All right. Damaged. Okay, whatever. I'm just going to activate Miracle Locust. So I target this guy. He gains a thousand attack and you draw a card. But no battle damage happens from this battle to you. He's 2100 now. Oh my god. Yep. Don't forget to draw also, a card. Also, I draw a card. You draw a card. This card is not good. However, I checked in one just because you never know. That, yeah, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> I'll end my turn. All right. During your end phase, yeah. I activate Soul Crater. So I banish a trap card to destroy a face down spell or trap. It's a trap. Card. Okay. This is my turn. I know this I'm is actually a problem for me now. <laughs> Is it so cool when it works? Like, I have... Oh, oh. Wow, that Kawakinator Guardian's kind of threatening. Yeah, kind of. Mm. <laughs> I'm entering my battle phase and attacking directly with Kawakinator Guardian. I think I have to force it out. Potentially. Gores. Yeah. I'm going to negate yeah. the activation. Yeah. Um, I'm attacking for 1100. Well. This is Iron Train Blaster Beacon. Okay. 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 I'm ending my turn. Also, I want you to know in the second game, I literally opened with four trap cards and Mystery Cataclysm. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to Blackwing Sirocco the Dawn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attack Iron Chain Blaster. I will take that 900 damage. And I'm gonna set a card. I think I'm out. Oh, never mind. Uh, I'm normal summoning Big Peace Cola without a tribute. Oh my <laughs> fucking god! This rules. Okay, you, you, I, I get it. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, no, this is great. I'm gonna enter battle phase. I'm gonna attack. Tell me you have Kalut in your hand. Okay, cool. I will not tell you that. Uh, I end my turn. I normal summon Blackwing Blizzard the Far North. I accept this. I really, really, really wish that I could get back Soroka with this, but I can't. Because Blizzard the Far North does not allow me to get back anything except four or lower. Good. But I still have the ability to make Assault Dragonfly. Yeah, I'll take 300. Assault Dragonfly is nothing special, but it is six. So go for it. Oh, this is hilarious. I'm just gonna set a monster and end my turn. Okay. Okay. Listen. Hmm. Buddy, do you think I could get a potentially a favor from a foe? I think you could. Just for funsies. For funsies. Ooh, these ones are good. Those are really good cards. Also, those are really good cards. Yeah, I'm gonna take the Kalut, I think. <laughs> oh, um, put Axe of Despair on the top and Black Whirlwind on the bottom. Okay. And this card is not banned because this game does not count. Exactly. I'm gonna normal summon Blackwing Kalut the Moon Shadow. Mm hmm. And because I control a black wing, I can special summon from my hand. I can special summon this card from my hand. This sucks. Okay. I finally, finally. Oh my God. Rika. I've literally been waiting a month and a half to special summon this card from my hand. I'm proud of you. And this doesn't even count though. It doesn't even count. <laughs> but I'm sending it to the grave. <laughs> For Stardust Dragon. Heck. Battle. Alright, yeah. Attack. That small piece golem is destroyed. Assault Dragonfly. Yeah, take 2400. You know how it is. It's so funny that you're playing Big Piece Golem Control, <laughs> and I'm also playing Big Piece Golem Control, but my Big Piece Golem is Blackwing Sirocco the Dawn. <laughs> 
Well, I'm gonna end my turn. All right. Huh. I forgot I put this card in my deck. I'm gonna activate Scales of My. Uh, I can barely say oh, the word. Oh. Okay. That does not say the word destroy. It doesn't. I'm gonna set a monster and end my turn. All right, Ada. <laughs> Upkeep phase. I was gonna go back and change this to standby. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to change this to say standby phase. Why the fuck did it say upkeep? I don't know why it said upkeep. Upkeep is what the standby phase is called in Magic the Gathering. I know. <laughs> I tribute Assault Dragonfly during the standby phase. Yes. <sighs> during the battle phase, I attack with Stardust Dragon. My golem. And my turn. My turn. Alright, I don't have a monster to tribute during my upkeep. You sure don't. I will just set a card and end my turn. Well, I don't have to tribute this. Okay. We don't both control something. Oh, if both players have a monster. Oops. Understood. Normal summon man eater bug. Uh huh. And equip it with acts of despair. <laughs> uh huh. I understand. I have just realized that I, in my head, swapped our life point totals. It would have been really funny to attack with Maneater Bug for game. It would have been really funny to attack with Axe of Despair Maneater Bug for game. Hey, can I take this one back? Sure. Like, I'll still do this, because it's funny, but I'll put the axe on Stardust. Uh-huh. And, yeah, we'll do this. And activating half or nothing again. Okay, well, I guess it wouldn't have happened anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you halving? You're halving, right? Yeah. Alright, 1750 and 225? Mm, love to see you lose 225 <laughs> life points. <laughs> love it. So good. Go for it. If I draw a monster, it's over. This is not a monster. It is, however, a trap card that I am setting. And it's your turn. Battle phase. Man eater bug attacks. I'll take it. Stardust attacks. I have to take it. I'm dead. I'm so sad that you didn't get a monster last turn. Draw a card. It was a small piece golem. <laughs> okay, so let's pretend. What would you do if you got small piece golem? I just would have attacked man eater bug. What do you have proof of powerlessness? Because I didn't know you were going to be playing all of my monsters are only in defense position. The deck. <laughs> yeah. Proof of powerlessness is bad. We can both agree on that. But it was a fun of. I was considering playing it when I was trying to think of a synchrocentric build. So I understand you. Also, uh, when I did the consumption thing, I was thinking like limiter removal. Because like, starters can't negate limiter removal, right? Because the destruction doesn't happen as part of the initial effect. Yeah, but isn't that two different effects? It's double the attack of all monsters, period. During the end phase of this turn, destroy those monsters. Yeah, that's how consumption is, too. When your opponent's most covenants a monster, change those monsters' defense position. Also, they have their effects negated, period. Destroy those monsters during the end phase of this turn. Shit, I think you're right. I think that play wasn't legal. Rip. Do you want me to look back at the footage and we reconstruct the case? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's too much trouble. I just needed to know I'm not crazy for thinking that it was a great play. No, no, I, I think you're right. I think that would have worked. Hmm. Yeah, it's okay. I'm going to need to look back at the footage to see if I should feel bad about this. However, regardless, I did win game three, so... You did win game three. It was a shutout. I won the theoretical game three, which was the real game three if it was the real game three. <laughs> so... I, I won the episode, but uh, Fravor from a Foe is not banned. But Dunkel Hirta is. Oh, Let's all God. say goodbye to everyone's favorite Fey gamer. Oh, thank God Dunkel Hirta's gone. That card is such a pain to play around every week. Listen, listen, listen. Dunkel Hirta's a fan favorite. I'll try and put another Dunkel Hirta card in, but not immediately. When I'm asking the AI to, to write a card, I will write in the name Dunkel Hirta, comma, something. And don't go here to face something. Fae sports. No, 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 no. We can't do Fae sports for a while. We can't do that till the UAs come out. Lame. Well, we'll we'll get Dunkel here to UA Fae esports coach, but that'll be a long time down the line. That's pretty far off. Right now, next time we've got 
Ancient Sanctuary? No, Ancient Prophecy and Retro Pack 2. So, that'll be some cool stuff. Retro Pack 2 looks fun. Why don't you tell me what's in Ancient Prophecy? Uh, all I know is there's an ancient fairy dragon in there. There is an ancient fairy dragon in there. You are right. This set introduces the Fishborg Fortune Lady archetypes and includes support for the Kawakimaru archetype as well as for Blackwing, Infernity, and XX Saber cards. Oh, you get Magic Hat in this pack. Magic Hat is such a cute card. Oh, no! Oh, we get Gaia Plate the Earth Giant in this set. I actually love this card. It is a little bit weird, though. We do kind of introduce Fortune Ladies here, but it's really more a taste of what's to come. There's only two Fortune Lady monsters in this set, both at Rare and the Field Spell. That's really weird. However, it's a start, hoping for a playset of light and fire, or at least light. Are you a fortune lady liker? I'm a very much a fortune lady liker. Are you Are you hoping to get the field spell? <sighs> the field spell would be nice. Even if it, even if I did not end up playing fortune ladies, the field spell would be nice for strategies down the road. Name one. Anything annoying that slows down the game in a format where normal summons are relevant. Okay, when I was younger, I liked Toon Monsters, like the old ones that all had summoning sickness. So Future Visions basically puts that effect on everything because it takes them out of the game for a turn. And also, Future Visions doesn't summon it back to the field, it just puts it back in the field so they can attack when they come back to the field. It was fun. It was not good, but it was fun. That's not the card I was talking about. <laughs> Future Visions? Yeah. What card were you talking about then? Fortune Fountain. Oh my god. I got the Discord notification of I'm about to read some bullshit. Fortune Lady Fortune Fountain. Another field spell. If an effect would increase the level of a Fortune Lady monsters, you can increase it by up to two more. You can target a Fortune Lady monster with a level higher than its original level. Special summon one Fortune Lady monster from your deck with a level lower than the targeted monster's level and with a different name from the cards you control. And if you do, Reduce the targeted monster's level by the level of the special summon monster. That's a lot of text. You cannot special summon other monsters with that same attribute by the effect of Fortune Lady Fountain this turn. This is abusable. Wait, Probably. Let me read Fire. No, yeah, that's abusable. It has Fortune Lady in the name. All right, Ada. I can't wait until the next draft. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in the next draft. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Rika, I've got a question. I have an answer. Would you like to shout out our sponsor? I've done the sponsor shouts out for all the last episodes. Do you want to do it this episode? Who's the sponsor? You got to tell me who the sponsor is. I don't know yet. That's why I'm asking you. Uh, okay. I just want to say shout outs to today's sponsor, the Arcadia Movement, bringing the joys of calm thoughts and therapy to viewers like you. Thank you. Please never mind the fact that the person who owns and runs the foundation is a murderous psycho. I mean, psychic. Wait, wait you mean Sayer? What's wrong with Sayer? You know, not like he, you know, tried to throw someone out of a window. That hasn't listen, happened Listen, listen, who hasn't done a little defenestration in their time? I haven't. You never defenestrated somebody? I just had to Google it right now because you used it so many times. I was like, wait, what does this mean in this context? It means exactly what it sounds. It, <laughs> it literally, it means exactly what I said it to me. Defenestration. Noun. One. Formal. Humorous. The action of throwing someone out of a window. That is literally what our sponsor, the Arcadia Movement, strives to do in everyday life. Defenestration. Use your imagination. All in one nation. Well, at least they're not the Index. At least they're not the Will of the City. The Index. You gotta play Library of Ruina. <sighs> it's in my Steam. I've been meaning to. I just... Well... <laughs> you should you should play Library of Ruina. I was gonna hey, say... Hey, everybody. Everybody. Play Library of Ruina. That's my statement. It's, it's a good game. It's my Game of the Year 2021. Game of the Year. Well, I certainly thought that episode was pretty good. Hope you enjoyed it, too. If you ask me, the best part of it was... This is unacceptable. Are we really going to let Ada slide that past us? I won the best of three anyway. There's no proof. There was no siding in the last game. Rika was robbed. 
Everyone, if you see this, I need you to go to the comments and spam the hashtag justice for Rika. Get this trending on Twitter. The world must know. But, until it does. I'll see you in the